जय बाबा चैप्टर 118 सपने कर हर्ड इज वाइफ विजन एंड वॉज सर्टन दैट बाबा हैड ब्लेस्ड इज वाइफ बाय कमिंग इन अ ड्रीम इमीजिएटली बोथ हजबेंड एंड वाइफ सेट आउट फॉर शिरदी बाबा वॉज नॉट इन मस्जिद आई एज ही वॉज एज ही हैड गॉन टू लेंदी गार्डन दे वेटेड फॉर हिम विद बेटेड ब्रेथ वेन साई एंटर द मॉस सपने कर वाइफ वॉज शॉक as this was the same fakir who had come in a dream she mentioned this to sapnekar and thus both were relieved that baba had forgiven them and called them to him baba's feet were washed and he sat down like a king observing his kingdom sapnekar and his wife both prostrated at baba's feet sai smiled at both of them Baba looked at another person who was present with Sapnekar and his wife. Sai began to talk to that person, though in reality he was addressing Sapnekar and his wife. I am in great distress and the pain is unbearable in my hands, stomach and waist. No medicines seem to work. I feel that I have been cursed. I am fed up with taking so many medicines but now all the pain and discomfort has suddenly disappeared. In reality Baba was describing Saptanekar's wife's health situation. She was in great distress. Her stomach, waist and hands ached constantly. With Baba saying that he was now relieved of pain, it meant only one thing that soon Saptanekar's wife too would be relieved of all the pain. Saptanekar and his wife stayed in Shirdi for 2 months and a pain disappeared completely. They went again to take darshan of Baba and to Saptanekar's dismay once again Baba told him to get out. Saptanekar returned to his dwelling. He wondered as to what grave sin he had committed in this life or past lives to have incurred the wrath of Baba. Everybody was treated with love and respect but him. He wondered as to why. Yes, he agreed that in the years gone by he had harbored doubts about Baba, but that was due to his own ignorance. Was Baba actually drawing him closer by seemingly pushing him away? Saptanekar decided that he would find a time and day when Baba was alone and beg him for mercy and an explanation. A few days later, an opportunity presented itself to Saptanekar. He immediately prostrated at the feet of Baba. and wonder of ba- wonders baba placed his hand on saptanekar's head tears welled up in saptanekar's eyes and he began to press sai's feet a few moments later a shepherdess met baba and sai began to talk to her saptanekar began to realize that in reality baba was talking about his life story even the mention of his son's death cropped up The story was mainly about a father and a son. The lady patiently heard Baba out. She was used to Baba telling something which was actually meant for somebody else altogether. Suddenly Baba looked at Saptanekar. He has accused me of killing his son. He has accused me of being a killer. If I go about killing children, what is he doing in this mosque? Anyway, I shall bring back his son to him. I brought Ramdas back from the dead. I shall bring his son back too. He shall have his son back. Then Baba put his hand on Saptanekar's head. My child, have full faith in me. You have reposed your love and faith at my feet. All your worries will soon be over. These feet of mine are very very old. Baba again placed his hand on Saptanekar's head. be in peace allah malik hai saptanekar returned to his dwelling feeling on top of the world not only had baba accepted him but had also blessed him with love and tenderness his wife and he prepared naivedya and they went to the mosque after the aarti concluded they approached baba saptanekar sprinkled water around the plate touched his fingers to his eyes and then placed the naivedya in front of baba sai smiled and touched the plate which meant that not only had he accepted the offering but had also blessed it 
husband and wife began to leave the mosque and Saptanekar once again turned to Baba and made obeisance to him. Baba looked at him and said, one salute, one prostration done with love, humility and reverence is more than enough. That night, Baba was to stay at the Chavdi. Saptanekar was given the role of walking in front of the procession with the staff in his hand. When Saptanekar looked at Baba, he realized that he was looking at Panduranga of Pandarpur. After a few days, Saptanekar sought Baba's permission to leave for their home. Baba gave the permission but told them to first eat the meal and then leave. Saptanekar was worried that if Baba asked for Dakshina, how would he procure it as he had just enough to reach his hometown? Saptanekar decided that he would give Baba whatever he asked for but would keep the money for the fare aside. If Baba asked for that as well, he would tell Baba that the money had got over. Baba then asked for Dakshina. Saptanekar placed a rupee in Baba's hand. He, Baba again asked for Dakshina and Saptanekar complied. Now he had just enough money left for the trip back home. Baba smiled and placed a coconut in Saptanekar's hands. Place this coconut in your wife's lap. Then you may travel back home in peace. Leave all your cares and troubles at my feet. A year later, Saptanekar and his wife returned to Shirdi. They took Baba's darshan and placed their newly born child, Murlidhar, at his feet. Murlidhar was a few months old. Sai, how can we ever thank you? We are lowly creatures, but you still took mercy on us. Please always have mercy on us and keep us in your loving protection and at your feet always. Saptanekar and his wife had two other sons, Bhaskar and Dinkar. The family was always under the protection of their master, Sai Baba of Shirdi. Peace be to all. Baba, bless us with faith, love and humility always. Jai Sai.